Tonight's headlines are brought to you by McDonald's. Good evening, Commonwealth, and thanks for watching the Channel 2 News. I'm Sally Lemus. Let's take a look at tonight's top stories. It's been proven that alcohol consumption and Puerto Rico Road do not mix well. Also tonight, lots of boaters on the water this weekend. Three experience difficulty. And finance department steps up their tax system game. We have the details. In sports, the big one got away from everyone except this guy. Stay with us, these stories and more are next. Good morning, Kiko. I am here at Docomo Walleri Branch. The Docomo staff here are super helpful with my appointment. They take good care of me in just a few minutes. Thank you so much for helping me out downloading and using the Skate Lino app. I can take care of all my Docomo needs. No need to wait in line with the Skate Lino app. We love you, Docomo Pacific. Better together. So up until now, the only ways we've had to fight COVID are closing things down, which has been really hard on people here in the CNMI. Um, a lot of people have lost jobs, and a lot of people have lost incomes. Uh, and although it's been effective, it's not sustainable. It's not something we can do forever. Um, vaccination is a way for us to safely resume a lot of those things that bring vibrancy to the CNMI, to hopefully reopen to tourism in some safe capacity to get people back to work in various service industries. Somebody in the CNMI will win $1,000 this Friday, and it could be you, but only if you're vaccinated. The Road to 80 is the CNMI's push for an 80% vaccination rate, and we've got thousands of dollars and a Nissan Rogue Sport to drive us there. Watch the first weekly drawings this Friday, July 16th, on the Road to 80 CNMI Facebook page. Register for your shot today at vaccinatecnmi.com or call 682-SHOT. The Road to 80 is brought to you by the Office of the Governor, COVID-19 Task Force, Commonwealth Healthcare Corporation, Joe 10 Enterprises, Bridge Capital, Tan Holdings, and more. And there you have it. McDonald's new crispy chicken sandwich from the makers of the world's most stolen fries. The juicy chicken sandwich from the place that offers extra napkins for a reason. The tender chicken sandwich from the creators of a sandwich phenomenon. So you won't just be biting into a chicken sandwich. You'll be biting into McDonald's new crispy, juicy, tender chicken sandwich. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. I am the I in CNMI. We are a team and you cannot spell team without me. M-E. Get a shot and opportunity to set the CNMI free from COVID-19. So let's go for a save. A strikeout. A knockout punch. That's our goal. V for victory. V for vaccinate. Let's make this a team win and we can all celebrate. Half a day to the Wami and good evening, Commonwealth. Today is Monday, July 12, 2021. A drunk driver strikes a pedestrian who now sustains multiple injuries. 
According to the Department of Public Safety, around 5.30 Saturday morning, officers responded to an auto-pedestrian collision in Puerto Rico, where they found a 22-year-old local male underneath the front portion of a red Tacoma truck. Gory pictures and videos circulated social media fast that very same day. 28-year-old Vincent Ogutu, who was the driver, claims he didn't see the pedestrian because it was dark. However, officers on the scene detected a strong odor of alcohol coming from Ogutu. After conducting a standard field sobriety test, Ogutu was arrested for driving under the influence. The crash is still under further investigation. Medics who responded to the scene state injuries to the pedestrian includes lacerations to the back of his head, abrasions to the lower back of his head, a deformity to the right ankle, abrasion to forehead, laceration to chin, abrasion to left arm, and abrasions to bilateral knees. As of press time, the pedestrian is still at CHCC for observation. More with the DPS, boating safety officers were busy this weekend as they responded to three separate distress vessels over the weekend. On Saturday, July 10, at about 5 p.m., DPS received a call regarding a distressed canoe two miles from the prepositioned ships on the west side of Saipan. Boating safety officers were able to establish a towback to the Smiling Cove Marina. The three occupants stated they had difficulties coming back due to no wind. They did not require any medical attention. And two minutes after the first call, the United States Coast Guard informed DPS about another distressed vessel. BSS units went to the west side of Saipan and spotted a flare. Officers established another towback to the Smiling Cove Marina. The occupants stated they were on their way back when their engine suddenly shut off. They then discovered a leaking fuel hose. On Sunday, July 11, another distressed vessel near Goat Island called for assistance. Occupants stated they were trolling about 10 miles south of Goat Island when they began to smell burnt wires coming from the cabin. When the operator went to check what was burning in the cabin, he began to feel sick. DFEM's medic transported him to CHCC for medical assistance. Boarders are encouraged to call into Channel 16 when you need help or would like to report a distressed vessel. The CNMI's U.S. delegate locks in an eight-year funding deal for the Medicaid program. Congressman Gregorio Kalili Sablon made an announcement over the weekend that a bipartisan agreement has been formed to provide the Marianas with $480 million in federal Medicaid funding. This funding will last for eight years, with a local match of 17%, the lowest than any other state government. The bill will be introduced next week and is in preparation for a vote by the full House of Representatives. The Department of Finance may be upgrading their tax system real soon. Earlier this month, the Office of Insular Affairs awarded the CNMI $3.4 million in grant funding under the Fiscal Year 2021 Technical Assistance Program and Maintenance Assistance Program. One of the priority projects under the program is the Revenue Management Tax System for the CNMI Department of Finance. Finance Chief David Atalik. This will be a system to be able to internally manage our processes as well as um, automate our uh, um, automate the tax refund process. We're also looking at taxpayers and businesses um, submitting their tax refunds online, getting that data online, automating the process so that there's no more data entry. Atalik explains that human errors often occur from both the taxpayer side and the data entry side. Sometimes, uh, you know, just filling it in handwritten on their forms. Sometimes a four looks like a nine. And then when this gets entered, there's errors in your tax refunds or tax calculations. So we want to reduce those human errors. The new system will also allow taxpayers, businesses, and corporations to submit online payments and required documents. Atalik believes they will be able to get the system running in about 18 months. I anticipate that I will uh, get the first year going. Uh, we need to um, uh, get some developers and uh, programmers uh, on board. And um, the main challenge would be our legacy data. It's a data conversion so that we can make sure that we have historical data in the new system as well. So that, might, that will be the uh, biggest challenge 
Um, but it's nothing that we haven't been looking at for the last year and a half. Coming up, getting vaccinated may win you some prizes. Stay tuned. My doctor gave me the pills, so they must be safe, right? If taken exactly as prescribed, short-term use can be safe, but painkillers have real risk. Misusing an opioid painkiller can cause serious harm, including addiction and death, and misuse can happen quite easily. Make sure you never mix them with alcohol, antidepressants, sedatives, or sleep aids. And if you are prescribed an opioid, you need to tell your doctor about any other drugs, including herbal supplements that you are taking. It only takes a little to lose a lot. Drop into the Shake Cafe at Gold's Gym for a quick and healthy meal. It's fast food that's good for you. Our July Smoothie of the Month has oatmeal, peanut butter, raisins, and cinnamon. It's a healthy blend of 450 calories that's perfect for a meal replacement or supplement. Shake it up at Gold's Gym. websites like the CDC website, Mayo Clinic website, any established um, hospital system or healthcare system. I suspect that Kaiser has a lot of information out there. I would go um, to known websites, WebMD, Healthline, they all have a, a, a lot of information that is reliable and w well thought out. I would much less go to blogs and the individuals who are looking at it from their own perspective and not necessarily science. One of the best things you can do during the pandemic is to get yourself healthy and strong. Gold's Gym is a great place for a tune-up. Wide open workout spaces with dedicated cardio, free weights and machines, personal training, group exercise and good nutrition. Short term daytime promo on sale now, just $159 for three months. Call 233-4000. Welcome back to the Channel 2 News. Getting your COVID-19 vaccination may now win you a car and other cash prizes. It's called Road to 80. Currently, the cinema has a 66.8 fully vaccinated population, just a little more push to reach the goal of herd immunity. And to entice more community members to get the vaccine, the CNMI Office of the Governor, along with the COVID-19 Task Force, will conduct a seven-week raffle drawing until the grand finale at the Taste of Marianas. The raffle will hand out cash prizes every week, ranging from $1,000 to $4,000. And as for the grand prize, fully vaccinated individuals have a chance to win $15,000 or a brand new 2020 Nissan Rogue Sport. To learn more about the mechanics, you may visit vaccinatecinemai.com. 
on Guam, further investigations on the death of Michael Castro leads to a second arrest. KUAM has the story. Hafid AC in my Guam, who see Isaiah Ugin, and here's what's making news on Guam. Top being a second person has been arrested for the death of Michael Castro. Tyler Matsunani reports on the latest twist to an investigation that first started as a missing persons report eight months ago to murder. 32-year-old Troy Ryan Damien was booked and confined at DOC after being picked up by criminal detectives late Thursday. GPD Sergeant Paul Tapal. Mr. Damien has been arrested and is confined for the following uh, uh, offenses of murder, aggravated assault, use of a deadly weapon in the commission of a felony, reckless conduct, discharge of a firearm, conspiracy and guilt established by complicity. Although GPD held back specifics about the arrest, a magistrate's complaint tells the story of what happened. And apparently there's an audio recording from a police source of Damien detailing how he and Nicholas Wayne Moore killed Castro. According to the magistrate's complaint, Damien was bragging about how he and Moore had been in a car chase on Cross Island Road. Moore was the driver, while Damien was the passenger shooting at Castro. Damien told him that Castro did not die immediately, so he began punching him. They then placed his body in a drum. The entire conversation was recorded by the SOI, who then turned it over to investigators earlier this month. The magistrate's complaint also details the fact that two pistols were confiscated from Moore's parents' home. One matched the bullets used in the murder. DNA from blood samples lifted from the gun showed a mixture of DNA from three individuals. One was a match for Castro, another for Moore, and the third showed no familial relation to either Moore or the victim. Could it be Damien? Because of the sensitivity of the case and of course to protect the rights of due process for both, um, both Mr. Moore and Mr. Damien, we're going to refrain from expounding too much in the case. Moore is currently on house arrest being monitored electronically. He allegedly admitted to knowing Castro and having past dealings with him involving the sale and use of illegal drugs. According to an SOI, he alleges that Moore confessed to murdering Castro with a combat knife. He is next scheduled to appear in court on July 19th. His defense attorney Mike Phillips reacts to this latest development. This is a, a, a real um you know, 180 degree turn now. But that is a, uh, a big difference from uh, what we were facing last week uh, or so when uh, we were before the court and uh, he was the sole person charged and they accused him of the murder. They're saying Mr. Demian um, was firing um, a gun at, uh, at Mr. Castro and it was more of a chase. And so uh, I think that's inconsistent with what they said so far. Damien is scheduled to be magistrated on Saturday. Additionally, he does have a criminal record, as he was previously arrested on different occasions for assault, family violence, burglary, and disorderly conduct. He was last at DOC on June 10th after being picked up on a bench warrant, but he was released a day later. Reporting for Guam's News Network, I'm Tyler Matanani. Stay informed 24-7 by checking out KUN.com or downloading the KUN News app available for iOS or Android. Reporting for Guam's News Network, Guam C.A. Zia again. Thank you. All right, coming up, the Derby turns 37 years old and it's more popular than ever. For the different beats of your life, we're here to keep you connected the way you want it. Plans made for you, by you. Build your own bundle with Link. Select the internet, entertainment, mobile, and home phone plans that fit your lifestyle. Pay for what you want, not for what you don't. Build your own bundle and save with Link. Opioids are commonly prescribed drugs. They can help ease short-term pain after surgery, an accident, or illness. Common brand names include Vicodin, Demerol, Oxycontin, and Percocet. Opioids can be very addictive, and they can actually change how your brain works. Opioid misuse can lead to death. If you are prescribed an opioid medication, talk to your doctor. Always take exactly as directed, never take higher doses, keep your medication secure, and safely dispose of unused or expired medication. It only takes a little to lose a lot. 
Sir Lin Foundation promotes the culture of giving back. The foundation and its generous partners are committed to supporting programs that include health, education, and sports. Initiatives that promote arts and culture, the environment, and tourism will benefit our community and our residents. Giving back and making a difference will help ensure that the island paradise we call home will be a better place to live. We're in a race whether we know it or not. And build our new normal. In Afamali, CPL. Tonight's sports brought to you in part by Tan Holdings through the Tan Su Lin Foundation, making communities a better place to live. Buenas sports fans. Buenos sports fans, the 37th annual Fishing Derby brought in a lot of marlin, but there can only be one grand prize winner, and here's that story. Saturday, day one. Fish coming in, weigh everything because you never know what's a winner. Oh yeah, a Fishing Derby is a good excuse for adults to act like kids. 90 boats entered, including, for the first time, sailing canoes. It's not mahi season, so any mahi is a possible winner. There's a nice wahoo, great eating fish, but marlin's the big prize that people were looking for. The first boat back Saturday afternoon, surprise Saipan Fishermen's Association President Tony Scragg. 2 p.m., John Hattick from Guam came in. He was on, remember, he was on the boat that, with Mike James, right. the one that I-42. Anyway, he came in with a 358-pound marlin this morning, or this afternoon, early afternoon. Wow. Um, could be a winner. Yeah. Could be a winner. Eight other marlin came in on Saturday, but nothing approaching Hattick's monster. The Danette from Guam was the boat to beat. Zigzag, for example, didn't catch anything. Hmm, what were they doing out there? Sunday afternoon, an overflow crowd spilled out to AMP. The marina was so packed, some people sat across the road. What's going on? How come there's so many people here today? Uh, we're here for, <laughs> for leftover fish. Not everyone had leftover fish. Good day today. Not really. Why not? Um, 
It was just a hard day today for us. Hey, can't win them all. Yeah, that's true. Did you have fun? Yes, I did, so. That's all that counts. Very true. Defending champion captain Pete Sablon, likewise. Pete, how was it out there today? Hey, the weekend. Defending champion. It was tough. It was tough. All weekend, we were just kind of grinding and trying to look for a spot, but. Didn't running, work out running. today. Yeah. It did work out for Hattick one by one. The boats returned. Nothing though was close to Hattick's big fish. John was part of that Mike James crew back in 2012 that brought in the 942 pound Marlin record breaker. I've been doing this too for a while. It's just that time of the year, Mike just asked us to be a partnered up, you know, be a crew for, with him. So we all decided, just amongst friends, we decided to follow him. But I've been fishing a while too. And I know how to fish marlin or whatever fish. With a $3,000 prize plus thousands more in side bets, it was a lucrative weekend. The winning catch, he caught it near Coke Reef. I look for anything, wahoo, whatever. But when I pulled up to uh, Coke, maybe two miles out of Coke, it went off. Did you think you had a winner when you caught it? No. It's never over until the last minute on a Sunday. How long did it take to bring in? I believe we ended up taking about a little over an hour because the thing never came up. It just stayed down in the water. Hmm. So he was taking some line. We took some. He took, he took more than what we, we took in. John Hattig is no stranger to sports fans here. His son, John Jr., played Major League Baseball. And John was a Micro Games gold medal winner. Fast pitch softball for Guam. How many tournaments have you won or won prizes in? Back home, I won a few. Uh, here, I've won a few with uh, Mike on his boat. You won a gold medal in the softball over here. You're going to win a couple of fishing derbies. It seems like every time you come to Saipan, you, you win. I'm trying my golf game now, trying to win golf. So. <laughs>